in what I often refer to as the four A's of autism. And in that first level of awareness, uh, we've been at it for uh, over a generation. And we've gotten so good at recognizing autism that uh, we see it in one in 54 people, or at least according to the CDC in Atlanta, which means there's an awful lot of autism. And what I tell educators is that if you don't have an autistic kid in your class, the numbers will probably catch up with you and you'll have one in the next. And what all this awareness does, recognizing autism at home, in the community, in the workplace, in education, and increasing numbers of autistic people reading about it and saying, well, gee whiz, maybe this is me. I better go get it checked out. And uh, what my parents did, and I see increasing numbers of parents doing and educators, is moving, taking uh, uh, um, awareness to the next level, uh, which is acceptance. Um, the acceptance part has come very far. And, you know, I think it is definitely an advocacy. Um, autistic advocates have done such an amazing job with that. Um, and also the therapies, like you mentioned, that are listening and working in collaboration with autistic adults and, and younger kids too. Um, ourselves, we're also working in collaboration with autistic adults. We've got advisors that are autistic and it's, right. it's crucial. It's um. Uh, it was eye-opening for myself. I was an ABA therapist and I started listening to autistic adults and, you know, we started bringing in a lot more of focus on their strengths and interests um, and it made a massive difference. We're seeing our kids not being angry and frustrated. They're really trying to open up and show us that, yes, I do want to uh, become a friend or, you know, I, I want the neurotypical... I guess, life, or I want a life that is social, but in my own way. And that's perfectly fine. So, right. yes. Um, you were saying about the second A, what is the third A? Third A is, is um, uh, appreciation. Hmm. And appreciation is where autistic people are valued for what we contribute to society and what we're able to contribute to society. And we're beginning to see this in, initially in some of the large IT companies, such as Microsoft, Google, SAP, Apple, and so on, who actively seek autistic people as their employees because they know a number of us can do things in IT that other people either can't do or do them much faster. However, that does come with a caveat. And that is, while I support all of this publicity around autistic uh, uh, IT super geekery, and it's great, and keep going at it. Mm -hmm. uh, my question always is, what about everybody else? Exactly. That's what I was just going to ask you. A lot of the parents are asking, but my child is not IT driven. You know, they're not interested in those kind of things. And I keep having conversations with people that are brilliant, like yourself. And, and it's inspiring for parents, but and also it gives them a lot of hope. But the, some of the parents would ask me, but what about my child? He's still nonverbal or non-speaking and That's he's right. yeah. you know, 10 years old. So that is such an important point and a, one that should be made. Oh, it is. And um, I, I, I know of some examples uh, where people who have skills in other areas, actually autistic, autistic IT geekery only occurs in a minority of us. And it's not that big a group, but it's big enough for these companies to take notice and squawk a lot about, and that's good. So for example, I know of a fellow in Florida uh, who does need more support. He'd probably be diagnosed now, maybe he is, uh, diagnosed as autism spectrum. I don't want to say disorder. I want to say different. So just autism spectrum. You don't even need the D. Uh, autism spectrum needing support level two. So he needs supports in communication. He doesn't speak much at all. He's non-speaking. And I prefer to use the word non-speaking rather than non-verbal yeah. because there's a lot of, lot of communication that goes on when people are talking to each other like we're doing now. Exactly. And depending upon the research, that other channel, nonverbal channel, might be up to 93% of the total communication package. Yes. So to say someone is nonverbal 
that means they don't understand language, which is a very serious condition or situation, which some people on the spectrum, uh, uh, we are in that space. Mm -hmm. However, I know many non-speaking people who once we get them on an AAC device, yes. they're communicating just as well as the rest of us. Mm -hmm. So getting back to this example, uh, this is someone who has an AAC device and he's got some words here. Uh, it, it's work for him, but he can communicate. So he needs support in communication, social interaction. Uh, he also needs support in just getting around transportation and managing his daily schedule. How, uh, however, he does have this curious interest in folding laundry perfectly. Oh, wow. <laughs> And I know many people who would like help with their laundry. Yes. You'd be happy to, <laughs> I'm yeah, go right to your house, and boy, you'd be, um, mm. he'd be the most, he'd be the happiest person in the world, mm. folding your laundry. Um, however, you'd have to pay him to do it. Yes. That is his job. He mm. spends all day in a hot laundry mat folding laundry, faster and better than anybody else, and he enjoys it, which is so important a vital aspect mm -hmm. he's productive he's fulfilled he's appreciated for what he contributes to mm -hmm. society yes. and what that suggests is that there's room for fulfillment productivity and meaningful employment mm -hmm. uh, for people all over the spectrum yes i and that is that's very important just to pause on that point for a second because I've worked in the field now for about 16 years and some of the kids that I worked with that were very young, um, you know, they're all grown up now and I still call them my kids, but they're young adults now. And I, I believe that it's more of an individualized approach that you should take with, with individuals that are perhaps not so um, interested in IT or systems thinkers, because there's a group, um, like you said, Microsoft, Apple, um, SAP that are interested in hiring these individuals. But what about those people that you were just talking about, the individuals that, are, that don't fit in that mold, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they might be, one person might be interested in folding laundry and that is a meaningful occupation for that person. And another person is really good in doing art and they might be creating, um, you know, some, some cards for, for a bigger company like Walmart or whichever other company that, that they can find a job at. But it, it, it needs to be something that is structured. Every January, they make cards that are themed in this, you know, this manner. And every February, it's like Valentine's or mm -hmm. March, it's something else. And, and that could be something for that individual. But it is a very individualized approach, I feel like, for for the individuals that don't fit in specific groups of interest, I think. Oh, there's huge diversity in autism. Mm -hmm. And it's possible that the diversity within the autism spectrum is even greater than the diversity outside of the spectrum, which is why I often say that when you've met one autistic person, you've met one autistic person. Yes, that is very true. And the fourth A, Oh, the fourth A, yeah, let's get to that. <laughs> uh, the fourth A is action. And action is the work that we do to recognize autism as it occurs, uh, to make sure that we accept and work with the characteristics. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I mean by acceptance is uh, you have a, an individual on the spectrum, you go outside, um, they melt down and engage in some pretty horrific behaviors. Uh, so we say, oh, they're autistic, just let them do it. That's, that's the wrong type of acceptance. But acceptance mm -hmm. is, well, first we're going to find out why this is happening. Oh, it must be sensory issues. That's why the child fails the Walmart test, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, you go into a Walmart or any big yes. box store like that, and oh, the kid melts down due to sensory overload. Oh. Uh, we're going to try to find other ways either other ways to get what we need or we're going to teach the child how to cope with being in a Walmart, possibly with ear protection, mm. uh, possibly um, gradually getting into it. Well, we're going to go into Walmart today. We are going, we're, we're getting a carton of milk mm. and that's it. 
Yes. Uh, just gonna go in and get one thing and go, and you as the adults are not allowed to change your mind. Oh, but we also need this. Mm -hmm. So let's just go over here and get it. You can't do that. Exactly. And mm -hmm. some people will be able to tolerate and work with that. Mm -hmm. But for others, you can live a fulfilling and productive life without going into Walmart or a store like that. Yeah. Uh, anyways, so that's the work that we put into it. It also means using strength-based approaches. Yeah. 